everyone, this is Richard Murdoch presenting another Mr. Sounds Review. For our first item, I am going to introduce the most sensational, the greatest illusionist in the country. Me. I have here a perfectly ordinary opera hat, which, as you can all see, is completely empty. I place it on the table so, I give the chitfer a tap for luck with the magic wand so, I utter the magic words, oompa, oompa, salopalitaric acid, and place my hand into the hat so. And already, I've got the bird. You don't believe me? Then have a look at this. Isn't it attractive? Thank you, Charlie. I place my hand in again, and what have we here? A jade frog. It's a parasol handle, actually, made by Fabergé, the famous jeweler to the Tsar of Russia, and lent by the Luton Hoo collection of Sir Harold Burner. They don't make things like this nowadays. I place my hand in again and... Oh! Good heavens, is this a firm? Yes, and I've sat in the orchestra and listened to you talk nonsense long enough. They don't make things like this nowadays, indeed. I can make magic too, you know. What about this? Modern craftsmanship and just as beautiful as your antiques. Yes, this is rather attractive, isn't it? Yes. Now, why don't you take the audience behind the scenes and show them how these models are made? Oh, I don't know. Let's go. Up with the curtain. This is the Pirelli glassworks at Potter's Bar. These men, who look as though they're working in a factory, are artists. Their medium is glass in coloured rods. Their tool, a gas flame. Melting, moulding and annealing the glass requires a variable temperature and gas provides an ideal flame for this work. Hot and strong to melt the glass, gentler and cooler to prevent the glass from cracking as it hardens. And of course, two other things are needed, skill and concentration. From these elements grow these fascinating abstractions. The wise owls on their perch. The graceful bluebird. The tiny squirrel. and a host of other jewel-like ornaments. These birds and animals and even ships. Men have always made model ships and at a famous model making firm at Northampton, I saw some of the finest being made. Joe Nutsford was soldering parts onto a ship's mast. Each tiny ladder rung is true to scale and only the extreme control which he gets with his gas flame prevents an out-of-scale blob of solder. Now the mast is ready to fit to the ship's hull. These hulls are usually made of hardwood and worked by hand to the final shape. In the wood workshop, we found Jim Kent working on a model trawler being made for the Canadian government. These howls are cut from a solid block of wood, yet the models are accurate to a five hundredth of an inch. Painting the models is a highly skilled job too, requiring great accuracy for the final details. But the ground colours can be sprayed on. A gas-fired drying cabinet is ideal for hardening the paint quickly without cracking. All this painstaking work is brought to a final effect by the assemblers. Accurate ship models like these are a traditional craft in England. Look at this model of the Battle of Trafalgar. Or this detailed recreation of the old tea clipper Thermopylae. Or this modern coal boat.
Small models play their part in modern publicity too. Take the ideal home exhibition at Olympia. Here I found a crowd round the gas council stand. They were watching clever puppet models demonstrating the benefits of gas. Gas for hot water. The coziness of a gas fireside. The ease of cooking by gas. Gas refrigeration. The simplicity of modern washing. Yes, gas from the large world demonstrated through the small world of model. Mechanical model toys are in great demand among today's children and I went behind the scenes at a Liverpool factory to see how they're made. The machines in which the models are die cast are gas heated. This ensures that the metal is at just the right temperature for speedy working. When the thousands of small castings have cooled, they go through a number of processes which remove the rough edges and prepare the surface to take enamel. Now the ground colours can be sprayed on in automatic machines. The enamel is hardened in a gas-heated drying oven. The details are sprayed on through ingenious masks. All that remains is the fitting of tyres and wheels and other details on the assembly line. These dinky toys are so accurate that they seem as real as the cars you see in any street. This street is in a Buckinghamshire village. It's unusually well laid out and has its own cinema and race course, as well as a Norman church. But these quiet streets are sometimes invaded by giants. <laughs> yes, this is a model village, Beaconscott Model Village at Beaconsfield. It was started in 1929 as a private garden hobby by Mr. Cunningham. The garden has been open to the public for 25 years and has delighted about 10,000 visitors a year, including royalty. Visitors are intrigued by the quiet country scenes, all to a true scale of three inches to a foot. A small lake sets off the Riverside Hotel. The roundabouts and swings are in constant movement. You can examine the architecture of the houses in model form and can watch the trains travel the country of this small world just as in the big one outside. Over bridges. Hello? Much binding in the Mars Airport. No, it can't be. It's got modern cars in the car park. Yes, we were big people in a small world. And these are small people in a large world. And here I have Bob Pelham, creator of the famous Pelham Puppet. Now, Bob, I know you started making these things after the war, but what was the first puppet you ever made? Well, will you tell the truth for me, please? Hi, this is Mac Boozle. He's one of my favorite puppets. He was born on the 22nd of June, 1947. Oh, you know his birthday? Oh, yes. So, born. <laughs> And uh, is it difficult to work these? No, it's very simple. After all, they are for children. Mm -hmm. You take a leg string, pull up, and the same string, pull down. Oh. Up and down, and that's all. That's the way he dances. Doesn't he get very thirsty? Well, I don't know. What does he think? Uh. Bless you, Mr. McBoozle. Now, Dick, I have just the puppet for you. Oh, good. Here is Lulabelle, lovely girl. She's father's toy. Oh, isn't she smashing? What does she do? Will you get a rhythm? Yes, rather. Right. Oh, Lulabelle, I think you're absolutely lovely. No, don't be shy. I'm really hard. I think you better have Lulabelle. Oh, thank you, Bob. Well, goodbye, Dick. I have a date with another puppet. Goodbye, Bob. Thank you very much. And, well, I seem to have my hands full, so that's the end of another Mr. Film's review. Cheerio, and up with the music.